Hello, I'm Finn Wakas, Film Quaker Dean at the Zicklin School of Business, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the Zicklin Spotlight. Today we're pleased to have with us Gideon Pell, who's a distinguished lecturer in our Department of Information Systems and Statistics, and he's here to talk about an article he wrote recently in Forbes titled, Regulating Crypto Exchanges, Mind the Gaps. Gideon, thanks for joining us. You're very welcome. Tell us a bit about your background and how you transitioned from your very distinguished professional career to now your work in academia. Uh, as you say, I'm a distinguished lecturer currently at Baruch. I've been here a, a year, and that followed a 35-year career uh, in financial services and, and risk management. I started out uh, mm -hmm. in London in, in a large public accounting firm and then moved with them to New York and have been mm -hmm. here for the last uh, 25 years. Uh -huh. and, and then I transitioned into, uh, into banking and, and securities. And, uh, and then uh, the last 15 years, I was chief risk officer at New York Life mm -hmm. Insurance Company. Uh, and I, uh, s over the 15 year period, mm -hmm. I set up the ERM, the enterprise risk mm -hmm. management function, and worked with the business heads, with the board, uh, in terms of um, coming up with a best practice approach to the identification management of risk across the, the enterprise. Mm -hmm. I combine my teaching responsibilities uh, with uh, a role in the Subotnik mm -hmm. Financial Center, which aligns really well with some of my uh, work background in the, in the trading uh -huh. and securities uh, world. So it's, it's a perfect combination uh -huh. for me. Gideon, you recently published an article in Forbes on the difficulty in regulating cryptocurrency exchanges. What were some of the challenges that you identified? Uh, there was a number of challenges that really face uh, both crypto assets but uh, crypto exchanges or the trading platforms mm -hmm. uh, that investors use to buy and sell uh, Bitcoin and other crypto currencies. Um, and I'll mention uh, three of those. Uh, the first uh, that I'll, I'll mention is the, um, is the fact that there, currently there's really n no licensing system within the United mm -hmm. States specifically designed for, for, crypto, for crypto exchanges. Uh, other jurisdictions uh, overseas in, in, in Europe and in Asia are developing some, some kind of licensing requirements, which is creating a, a kind of a badge of, of a, a seal of approval for crypto mm -hmm. exchanges. Um, so the question is, what's the, what's, how should the US industry react to that? Should they be asking their regulators to create a system, or should they follow the approach that some of the large ones have been taking, which is to create a self-regulatory organization with the idea of coming up with their own rules and policies to regulate themselves and to uh, distinguish them from the other exchanges which are not part of that group. What are some of the insights from your research that would be useful for consumers and the general public to remember? I think for uh, consumers, it's uh, buyer beware. Mm -hmm. It's uh, a bit a bit like the Wild West as yeah. far as uh, crypto exchanges. Yeah. Um, there are uh, reportedly over 500 mm -hmm. crypto exchanges around the world in which you can, um, uh, you can buy, sell, transfer. Mm -hmm. Uh, Bitcoin into other cryptocurrencies, in some cases uh, into actual um, cash or, um, or, or credit cards. Interesting. Well, we look forward to a conversation in the future about some of those insights. Thank, Thank you for being with us today. My pleasure. <laughs>